Dear Mr. Rosenwald, by Carol Boston Weatherford, illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. 1921, one room school. My teacher, Miss May said, you can't judge a school by the building. When the roof leaks, she calls us vessels of learning. When the floor creaks, she says knowledge is a solid foundation. Wind whistles through walls, blowing the sheet that splits the church into two classrooms. Me on one side, Junior on the other. Till I passed third grade, I sat beside him, counting with my fingers and fidgeting on the pew. Now I know better. My school is not much to speak of, but Mama says I'm lucky, even if class don't meet during harvest. Down here, she said, some black children go to school in shacks, corn cribs, or not at all. Don't know what I'd do if I couldn't go to school. Harvest break, just when I memorize the times tables. Instead of learning long division, I'll be working in the field. Sharecropping, six long weeks down row after row. Me and Junior worked right alongside Mama and Daddy, picking cotton till our fingers bled. Finally, Daddy put the last bale on the wagon and, ro and rode to town. He said our share of the harvest should pay off the season's debt and leave money to spare. Daddy was wrong. He came home with rock candy for me and little brother, but bad, bad news for Mama. We owe more to the white man who owns the land than we made selling the crop. Same story as last year. After supper, I leafed through an old Sears catalog, wishing. Later, I heard Mama fretting about the baby on the way. Another mouth to feed. I hope it's a girl. Supper. Uncle Bo ate supper with us. He sure talks a lot. I reckon because he's a preacher. But that don't explain why he eats so much. Between helpings, he invited Mama and Daddy to a rally at church tomorrow to drum up support for a new school. Soon as Uncle Bo said drum, Junior started rapping at the table. Rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, rat tat tat Mind your manners, Mama said. New school rally. Uncle Bo opened with a prayer. Then Professor James from the normal school stood in the pulpit, spoke as if he were used to people listening. Years ago, Booker T. Washington started Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. The college grew strong as an oak, but Booker T. would not seek the shade, not as long as young minds starved. Too many children, too few schools, and not nearly enough money. Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears Roebuck, has millions, earned every penny, and believes in sharing. Booker T.'s book, Up From Slavery, opened Mr. Rosenwald's mind. So when Booker T. wanted to build schools, Mr. Rosenwald opened his wallet. After Booker T. passed away, Mr. Rosenwald kept building, not just schools, but pride. Before his foundation will give a cent, you have to raise money on your own. White folks have to pitch in too. There will be one hurdle after another. Do your children deserve a new school? Everyone in church stood, clapping. How on earth will poor people find money to give away? Taking root. The church deacon voted to give an acre of land for a new school, space for a building, playground, and garden, land that would have been used for graves. Now a seed is sowed instead. Box party. Mama and Daddy say raising money is hard work. I say it brings folks together. Mr. Benson, a black farmer, let the rest of us plant a plot of cotton on his land to sell for the new school. Other folks raised hogs and chickens to sell. Box parties were my favorite. Me and Mama baked two apple pies, put them in a box, and tied it shut. Mr. Tanner said he smelled cinnamon through the box, made his mouth water. He bought our box and ate a slice right away. Daddy bid on a shoebox, but Uncle Bo's bid won. Inside was a dancing doll Mr. Green carved. Daddy blew a jig on his harmonica, did that doll dance. Passing the plate. Homecoming Sunday, a church full. Uncle Bo didn't need to preach a sermon after going on about the new school. Said we're gonna said we're gathering money and nickel a dime at, and dime at a time. The ushers passed the plate. Afterwards, Uncle Bo waved envelopes white neighbors sent. Twenty dollars in all. Then the choir sang, The Lord will make a way somehow. Just before the service ended, Miss Etta Mack asked to have a word. I was born a slave, worked hard even after freedom came. Never had time for book learning. Here's a dollar for money I've been saving for my burial. Hurry and build that school so I can learn to read my Bible. Blueprints. Professor James came around to see how close we are to breaking ground. After Uncle Bo told how much money had had 
After Bo told how much money had been raised, the professor beamed. You're halfway to the goal. Then he unrolled his draw. Then he unrolled big drawings, blueprints by a Tuskegee architect, 17 different floor plans, some with up to seven rooms. I'd get lost in a building that big. Our school will have two classrooms with moving with a moving wall between, a room for home arts and trades, cloakrooms, and plenty of windows to look out and daydream. Lumber. A family is like a tree, Daddy always said. Ours sprouted a new leaf. Leona, my baby sister. Soft, brown, bright-eyed. I sing lullabies when she cries at night. This child will have a better chance, Mama said. Soon building starts on the new school. Several farmers, black and white, cut trees from their land, hauled them to the sawmill for cutting, then dropped off the lumber on the lot beside the church. Those trees about to make history. Raising the roof. I never knew how fast a building took shape. After plowing all day, the men hammer and saw till the sun sets and they don't see no more. Just before the cold snap, they raise the roof. Soon as the weather breaks, said Daddy, walls and windows go up. Won't be long then. Hand-me-downs. Some men were chopping wood for the classroom's pot-bellied stove and other men were painting cream ceilings and gray walls. When a truck pulled up with old desks and used books from the white school, Miss Mays thanked the driver again and again. Then she gave us erasers to clean stray marks from the books, scribbles, doodles, answers, names. I wondered if white boys and girls learned the same as us. Playground. Daddy hung a swing from a branch of the old oak tree, and Uncle Bo drove a stake in the ground for horseshoes. Junior pitched first, almost got a ringer. I'll have to practice, practice to beat him. 1922, White Oak School. Uncle Bo cut the ribbon at the doorway and we marched into the new school, proud as can be. They placed sparkles. The place sparkled. After we sang, lift every voice. Professor James told us to be proud. Learning is priceless, he said. He gave Miss Mays a framed picture of Mr. Rosenwald for the lobby. Uncle Bo called Miss Shaw up front, a pretty new teacher from the city. No more eight grades in one room. Miss Shaw has a sing-song voice. Children, you are diamonds in the rough. I will polish you bright as stars. I had to speak next. Clammy hands, knees shaking, heart in my throat. Thank you, parents and neighbors, for building this brand new school. Your sweat taught us a lesson. Tomorrow is in our hands. Dear Mr. Rosenwald, even before the bell rang, we children lined up to lined up at the door, me with bows in my hair and ham biscuits in my lunch pail. I share a desk with Lottie May. Miss Shaw got busy right away. Our first lesson, letter writing. Dear sir, I am 10. I like to read books. My best subject is arithmetic. My parents are counting on me to learn all I can. This school is the first new thing I ever had to call my own. I'm going to stitch me a dress in the sewing classroom. One day, I'll be a teacher like Miss Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Rosenwald. Yours truly, Ovella.